so glad that you guys could join us. Let's stand up to our feet as we worship our King Jesus. He is worthy. Amen. Let's praise him.
church so good to be with you happy Sunday morning I don't know about you but as a parent as a new parent there's nothing more significant than to know the cries of your children 
A few nights ago, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I found my wife holding um, our baby camera. And she fell asleep holding uh, the baby camera to her face just like this. She was uh, asleep like this. Somehow during the night, my daughter was restless. She was crying and she was hungry and she was turning. And my wife was just watching her, making sure that she was okay making sure that she would go back to sleep and rest. I, I want to just let you know, some of you right now, you're, you're crying out to, to the Lord and you're wondering if God is listening to you, that if God, if God does, if he even cares about you. Let me tell you, there's nothing more significant to the Father's heart than to know the, your cry. And when you sound off and when you pray and when you uh, uh, let God know your requests of your heart, there's a resounding sound that reverberates within his heart. The Bible says he even knows what you're going to say before you say it because he loves you so much. And what I want to do this morning, I want to just take some quiet time with the music beautifully playing behind us to bring our cries, to bring our burdens to the living God and knowing and trusting and believing that he hears, that he sees, that he knows, and that he cares. What are you going through this morning? What burdens are you carrying Let me tell you, don't carry these burdens alone. Let's take a moment right now. If you're with your family, let's just bow our heads. Maybe some of you want to get on your knees right now. And maybe you just want to stand up from the couch or get out of the bed and raise your hands. But let's surrender our burdens to the living God. And I promise you, he sees, he knows, and he cares. Can I lead us to prayer this morning? Father, we come before you. And, And church, as I'm praying, I want you to just... Lift up your burdens to the living God. God, we come before you needing you this very hour. We need you, Jesus Christ. We pray that your presence would make our burdens feel a little lighter. Lord, we need you in some of the areas of our life, in our marriage, in our children's life. God, we need you in our mental health, in our anxiety. Church, did you know that the root word for anxiety actually means to struggle or to to strangle, excuse me, Anxiety makes us lose our breath. Father, I pray for those who have anxious thoughts in our church that they're seemingly pacing around in their spirit and losing their breath. Father, I pray that you would restore their breath this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, we bring you the burden of 2020. 2020 is a giant burden. And Father, we ask that you would give us the peace and the means to walk through it untapped, unscratched, unscathed because you walk with us. Church, it says this in Psalms 34, chapter or chapter 34, verse 17. Watch this. The, cry, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and he delivers them out of all their troubles. Isn't that good? So we're going to go back in a third song, but if you're just struggling this morning, I want you to carry your burden to Jesus, knowing that he sees, he knows, he cares, and he listens. Amen, amen.
up his name. God is so good. Jesus, your name is above all other names. God, you're so good. We worship you in this moment. We lift you up, God. We embrace you, Lord. God, we just need you in our life this moment, God. And come on, church, don't you feel a little bit better after praise and worship? God has no rival. Let me tell you, coronavirus can't compete with God. Your stress, your anxiety, your issues cannot compete with God, especially when we lift up the name of Jesus. So, hey, church, so good to see you. Welcome to church at home online. Hey, let's take some intentional time right now to say what's up. To say, uh, husband, I love you. Wife, I love you. Hey, how about this? Why don't we take some time right now? Pray. Let's do a 30-second prayer, and let's just pray for our marriage. Turn to your wife, turn to your husband, or, or turn to your kids, and let's just start praying. Hey, if you're home alone right now, I want you to put your hands over your heart. I want you to pray over yourself. Come on, y'all. All right, so glad to be with you this morning. Welcome to Church at Home. Hey church, good morning again to you guys. We are so grateful to be with you guys every single morning and it's my great honor to be with you now and in worship. Wasn't worship awesome? Let's give a hand at home to the whole team and the band. They make every Sunday possible. Wasn't that awesome? I know I needed that time just to soak in the presence of God and thank Him for all that He has done. Church, I wanna welcome you guys home to The Calling Church. We're so glad again that you guys are joining us. Right now we have the opportunity to continue to worship in our giving. And I wanna read to you guys 1 Chronicles 16, 29. It says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Now we just had worship, right? A few seconds ago, but worship isn't just only music. Worship to God is actually the way you live your whole life. It's being kind to someone. It's being obedient to what God is saying. It's reading His Word. Everything we do when following step with God is worship to Him. And right now we have the opportunity to continue to worship in our giving and thank Him for all that He's done, amen. So I wanna encourage you guys that just to think about in this moment that worship is more than just the music. Worship is saying, God, I am giving to you because I'm so thankful for all that you've done and you are my source above money and I'm gonna follow you and thank you in this moment, amen. So let's worship God in our giving. Can I pray for us? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for all that you have done. Right now we take this act, this um, act of love, giving back to you, God, in our worship. We bring you an offering. We ask God that you would bless it, that it would bless those around us in our community. God, we thank you that you're gonna do so much out of this, far beyond we could ever ask or dream in our community. We wanna thank you and we honor you this morning with our gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church, my husband, Pastor Michael, is speaking the word again this Sunday and we are super excited to have him. Aren't we excited, church? So in the chat, I want you to put all the emojis, not just clap hands, but put them all, baseballs, whatever you want to put. But let's welcome Pastor Michael in the chat right now as he is going to bring an awesome word. Hey, good morning, church. So great to see you. Happy Sunday. I hope that you are as excited as I am on Sunday mornings. I want you to know that uh, Sunday mornings come around, I get ready, I take a shower, I spray some cologne for Jesus. Even though I'm not with a lot of different people, all right, just with my wife or my daughter, I get ready for Jesus, all right, and I hope that you're excited. Not to say that you have to get ready. Hey, come as you are, turn on the TV as you are, you know what I'm saying? Bedhead, chunk robes, uh, slippers. Hey, we're just so excited to be with you. And I'm excited that you are feeding your faith and being encouraged in your faith today. Hey, if you're tuning in uh, to our church for the very first time, I want to welcome you. My name is Pastor Michael Alfaro. I lead this amazing, beautiful church with my amazing wife, Kareen Alfaro. Uh, we are four years old and we are doing mighty things as a local church in the area of Pasadena. And by the way, if um, per normal, I want you church, I know that we are not meeting together yet, but I still want you to take it upon yourself, all right? Because as Christians, hey, we have, we, evangelizing got way easier, all right? I would like for you to share this message right now with someone, all right, who needs hope hope, who needs help, who needs encouragement, hit the share button on uh, the YouTube arrow right there or 
copy the link and paste it, send it to your family. Let's not stop sharing the message of the gospel because it is the hope for humanity, okay? Uh, and, and so, yeah, I just want to take it, uh, I take it as very, very important that we continue to share, all right? And not be ashamed of the gospel. Remember Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power unto salvation, first for the Jew and then for the Greek, right? So it is a power of salvation. It is the good news for our salvation, amen? So hey, I'm so excited. We're gonna be in the book of John this morning and I've been studying my butt off, my tail off because I've just been yearning and searching for a word from God and I believe that I have a word from God to encourage you this morning in the book of John, all right? So we're gonna be in John chapter 14, verse one through eight and before we get there, let's go ahead and pray for the message this morning. Father, I thank you for every listener. I thank you for every person viewing this message. I thank you for those who are gonna tune in on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, God, during the week. Father, I thank you for those who are gonna re, uh, retune in, if you will, rewatch the movie to, to gain encouragement again. Father, I pray that you would speak through me. Holy Spirit, inspire people. Holy Spirit, as you hovered above the surface of the deep, Hover over our lives. Speak to us as we yearn for more, as we're hungry, God. We want meat this morning, God. So I pray for me to preach some meat, God, not some milk, Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you for this church. I thank you. It's no accident or coincidence, God, that you started this church four years ago, knowing there was going to be a pandemic, but also knowing that we're going to make it through and we're rising above and we're soaring above the waters and uh, walking on the waters above the storm, Lord. We thank you. We know you're with us, and we trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. Go ahead and give me an uh, uh, amen emoji, prayer hand emoji, all right? So we're gonna be in John chapter 14, verse one through eight. And by the way, if you are a a new Christian, if you just come to the faith, and maybe you've been a Christian for a year or several several years, and maybe you're intimidated by the Bible, I would say to park right here in this book, John. When I became a believer and started to devote myself Uh, really at the age of 21, but even at the age of 16, uh, I started to read the book of John. It was the very first book that I ever read. And I can tell you that I was going through a tough time and it meant so much to me. Uh, The fact uh, when I actually... uh, finished the book of John, I I literally clapped out loud and patted myself on the back because I was just so proud of reading and finishing the one book of the Bible. Let me tell you, it's a great place to start and begin your journey or to even just encourage your faith, all right? So we're gonna be in John chapter 14. Remember, there's only one gospel. There's four different perspectives. There's one gospel. There's four accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all right? So let's go ahead and start in John chapter 14, verse one through eight. And by the way, I'm a preacher that likes to talk about hermeneutics and exegesis and context. Uh, I, I don't think it's safe even to preach a message without ever giving you the context, baby. So the message that I'm going to be preaching to you this morning is significant uh, to understand the context. So let's go into the scripture today. John chapter 1, excuse me, John chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus is saying this and it's in red. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And let me pause real quick. It's not in my teaching or in my notes. Jesus is actually responding to Peter's uh, questions or his thoughts. And I'll get into that later. But I know for a lot of us this morning, our hearts are troubled. But in this very passage, Jesus is saying that do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. He's saying to his followers, you already trust in the Father, but also trust in me. Come on, y'all. All right, that's why we need to envelop in the scriptures to get to know the person of Jesus because we need to trust him as well. We need to trust him. He is God in the flesh. All right. And watch this. Here's the antidote to your worry. Here's the antidote to your troubles. If you got troubles in your heart, if you got troubles in your mind, they already shared earlier that uh, anxiety, the root word for anxiety, anxiety is to strangle is you can't breathe. You got a heaviness upon you. Uh, uh, but God wants to restore your breath. So if you have some troubles this morning, watch this. Here's the antidote for trouble. It's trust, boo-boo. Come on, y'all. The antidote to, tr- uh, to trouble 
is to trust. And that's what should be your prayer this morning uh, through 2020 is God, open my heart to trust you. Proverbs 3 verse uh, uh, Proverbs 3 verse 6, I believe says, I will trust in the Lord all my heart, right? Do not lean under your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Watch this. God, I need to know the direction. I, I don't know the direction, God. Watch this. And he will direct your paths. So trust, not trouble. Trust, not trouble. Come on, y'all. Say it in the comments. Trust, not trouble. He says this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Watch this. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Go ahead and write, I'm coming back. Write in the comments, I'm coming back. A lot of scholars kind of debate, but I can believe it's a little bit of both. Jesus in this context, and I'm going to get into it more after I finish it. I'm just so excited to preach. I can't I haven't even finished the whole text, all right? But Jesus is also talking about after his ascension that he will come back, reveal himself for 40 days. In fact, when he rises from the dead, people are going to see the grave start opening up and start seeing cousins and aunties raise up from the dead because Jesus rose from the dead. But it isn't, he, the context is not only about the ascension. The context is also about the second advent, meaning the second coming of Christ. Let me tell you, these are days in which y'all better be ready. You know what I'm saying? I said it last week. Don't be on the fence. Don't be one foot in. Don't be one foot out. All right? But it doesn't mean to be weird, but go all in for Jesus. Come on, give your heart to Jesus. Go all in. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That's how much God loves you, that he's not going to abandon you. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you, but I, he wants you to be with him for eternity. He says, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know, let me just pause. I know I'm doing a lot of teaching right now, but let me just pause. God has always somehow, some way, always dwelled with humanity, whether it was in the Garden of Eden, whether it was the tabernacle with the Israelites on the way to the promised land. Come on, preach it, y'all. Whether it was the temple, uh, uh, and Zion and Jerusalem. And now these days through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, specifically the Holy Spirit, God always dwells among humanity and is going now to a place heaven he's speaking about to make a way for us through the cross of Calvary. All right. He says, you, and he goes on to say this, I, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way, watch this now, this is where I'm, my, my, my subject is going to be today. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Write this on the chat right now. You know the way, you know the way, you know the way. I'm saying again, you know the way. He says, you know the way to the place where I am going. Watch this, I love this, because it reveals our humanity. This is Jesus' 12 followers, his close buddies. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And so how can we know the way? But just right before that, Jesus says, you know the way. Watch this. Oh, I want to preach about this today. But Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Let me tell you how powerful and significant this is. Church, this, John spends about five chapters. He's the only gospel or the only account that spends five chapters, verses, uh, chapters 13 through 17, 13 through 17, talking about something called the upper room discourse. The upper room discourse is about the last supper and John simmers and marinates in this, uh, uh, um, this setting of where Jesus is eating the last supper, re renew, uh, beginning a new covenant, doing, do, uh, you know, if, if, do this in remembrance of me, take, partake of the blood, partake of the bread. He's also sharing with them who's going to betray him at this moment. He's took, he takes a basin and washes their feet. And this is an intimate, even in a sad moment, because this is where their three-year journey of ministry, of following Jesus, the one who walked on the water, the one who, who healed lepers, the one who ate with tax collectors, the one who said, I am the great, I am before Abraham, I am. This is all coming to an end and they don't understand it and perhaps they don't want to understand it. All right? 
So Jesus is, is saying to them, you know where I'm going. And Thomas is like, Thomas, I don't, Thomas is like, I don't know where you're going. And I don't know the way. Watch this, verse 6. Jesus answered very powerfully. This is one of the most significant scriptures for our faith and in the Bible and in this upper room discourse, all right? Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Oh, that's powerful. Let me say that again. In answering Thomas, he says, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you really know me, go ahead and write on the comments, really, really, all right? If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, watch this, you do know him and you have seen him. The title of my message this morning is Jesus, it's called this, Jesus is the address. Oh, come on, y'all. Jesus is the address. Write it on the chat right now. Jesus is the address. Did I tell you you need to share this message? Can you feel the fire? All right. Y'all need to share it right now. All right. You would think by now that for three years after witnessing and watching Jesus, that the disciples would have all of these questions answered. In fact, in this five chapter discourse, uh, in just 14 alone, in chapter 13 alone, 13, 14, four of the disciples are asking Jesus significant questions. Peter, Jesus at one point says, where I'm going, you can't, come, you can't follow me right now. And Peter, Peter, one of the 12, says, why can't I follow you where you're going? It's like he doesn't know. All right, how about Thomas? Thomas says, Jesus, we don't know the way where you're going, all right? Uh, uh, we don't have the directions. Uh, Philip, on um, verse, uh, excuse me, ver- chapter 14, later on, he, he will say, uh, I don't, he, they, they don't understand that Jesus and the Father are completely one person, a part of the Godhead. And then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, another, per, another Judas, um, he asked later on in chapter 14 that, Lord, if, why do you only intend to reveal yourself to us but not the rest of the world? So it's like they only understand in part. And this is the very moment that it's all coming to an end because just minutes and just hours, they're going to leave the upper room and they're going to go to the garden where Jesus is betrayed by Judas with a kiss, all right? And he's taken into custody and the cross comes and the ascension comes and everything changes. But watch how powerful this is. It is the end of, of something amazing, all right? The journey with Jesus. But watch this. It's only the beginning. Oh, come on, y'all to a new age and it's only the beginning to a new age what age is that the age of the holy spirit and the coming of the spirit at pentecost where they will be filled with power dynamic power dunamis power in the name of jesus through the power and or empowerment of the holy spirit come on y'all all right so i want to i want to park my message this morning when it comes to the idea of thomas thomas said lord we don't know where you're going So how can we know the way? Right before that, Jesus says, you know the way. So in other words, what Jesus is saying, Thomas and disciples, you you actually do know, but you're not realizing it. And he says, Jesus says this, I am the way. I am the way. And John is famous for the seven I am's. I am the gate. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the vine. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. And here he says, I am the way. The way, can I submit this to you this morning, church, that if you're looking for a way through 2020, let me tell you, look no further than the person of Jesus Christ because with him, he is the way. Come on, y'all. He is the way. And let me tell you right now, this is a significant thought for you, all right? Jesus is not just a direction. Jesus is the de- part of the destination, y'all. Come on, somebody. Jesus is not just a direction. He's not just, he's not just trailblazing. You got to get this in your spirit. He's not just setting a, tra- a, 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 a blazing trail for you to follow. No, that's not. He's not just a path you walk on. Jesus literally is the embodiment of the way to the Father. That's why he says, uh, I believe to Philip, when you see, the, when you see me, 
You've seen the Father because remember, I believe if it's Colossians, Jesus Christ is the exact, or Hebrews chapter one, he's the exact red, uh, representation and radiation of the Father. He is uh, uh, the representa representation and the glory of God. Jesus Christ claims something that no one else claims. He claims to be equal with God and he claims to be one with God. I'm gonna tell you something right now. And you could turn me off if you're offended. I'm here to please one person. His name is Jesus Christ, all right? I'm not here to tickle or fancy, tickle anyone's fancy or tickle anyone's ears. I'm here to preach the unadulterated word of God with power and truth. Come on, y'all, all right? So what I'm about to tell you is the truth, all right? There is no other way to God. Let me tell you, the Taoism is not the way. Confucianism is not the way. Buddhism is not the way. Hinduism is not the way, and even part of Judaism is not the way. Why Judaism? Because Judaism heralds the law, and Jesus Christ fulfills the law on the cross of Calvary. And he says this, and it could be problematic for the world. He says, who do, he says this, I am the only way, y'all. I am the way. In one verse he says, I am the gate. I am the way to the Father. Now that poses some significant questions doesn't it not? And let me tell you, what I just said right now is not politically correct, boo-boo. But let me tell you something. It is biblically correct. And I'm about the Bible and I'm about the truth and I'm about the, the life of Jesus, all right? All right, so I'm not, it might be politically incorrectly, be incorrect and offend you, but it's biblically correct. Come on, someone write biblically correct on the chat right now. There is no other way. There is no other way. He is the only way. Watch this, what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 20. You remember that the, the writer is symbolically writing uh, to the Israel or the uh, Hebrew hearers, if you will, the Jewish believers. And he's, he's, he's symbolically saying that the curtain of the temple is the body of Christ. You guys remember in ancient Israel or Israel in the Bible, there was the Holy of Holies. And there was only one elected official a year that can go into the most holy place within the temple that was behind this huge ginormous curtain. In other words, the curtain separated people from God. And only one elected official can go in there uh, uh, once, I believe, per year, all right, to do ministry. Well, the day that Jesus Christ died on Calvary, the Bible says in John, I believe, that the curtain ripped, all right? Watch this. It says this. Therefore, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 20. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by how? By the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened up for us through the curtain that is his body. So in other words, Jesus Christ opened up this way to the presence, the most holy presence, which is God himself. This is not achievable with any other teaching. This is not achievable without any other person. This is not achievable with, by any other ideology or philosophy, but by the person of Jesus. And that's why he says, I am the way. I am the way. So Jesus is not just the direction. He, Jesus, if you meet him, he's not saying, this is the way. He's saying, I am the way. Embrace me. I am the living one who was once dead. Now I'm alive. Come on, y'all. All right, isn't that good stuff? And just let me share this with you. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 in the Philips version says this. In no one else can salvation be found. For in all the world, no other name. That's right. No other name. No other name. Not Mohammed. Not Confucius. All right. No other religious teacher. But the name of Jesus. Watch this. For in all the world, no other name has been given to man. But this. And it is by, the, by this name that we must be saved. Wow, isn't that amazing? I'm gonna speak to, uh, uh, intimately with some people right now watching. Maybe you've been having a hard time this uh, 2020. It's been a heck of a year, all right? Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe your marriage is failing. You know, I think marriages, I think married couples, we're not meant to spend this much time <laughs> together. Come on, y'all. It's crazy, right? Um, maybe, maybe your marriage is, 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 is on the rocks. Maybe your relationship with your family is on the rocks. Maybe your mental health 
is, is, is hard right now. Maybe you have cancer and you're dealing with a difficult diagnosis and you're hanging on to the whim of life. You're wondering, how am I going to make it through? There's people in my church who have cancer, who have had cancer as well. There, maybe I'm talking to someone right now in my church and you're, you, you're a single mom. Maybe you're a single dad, single mom. Maybe you're trying to make ends meet and you're trying to make sure the kids do well on online school and try to uh, provide for them. And you're wondering how, what's the address? Where do I need to go to, to get through this? Maybe right now you're having a hard time in your mental health anxiety and you're struggling and you feel like you're being strangled and just with everything that's happening, you're wondering, where is the address? How, where do I go to make it through? Maybe with your relationships, God, I'm having a hard time staying married in the process. I'm, I'm having a hard time being healthy with my family. What is the address to make it through? Let me tell you, boo-boo, let me tell you, church, that Jesus is the address. The address is Jesus Christ. And he's not merely just a direction. He is part of the destination. Let me tell you, heaven is the byproduct. The product of heaven is the person of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be excited just because I see the pearly gates and I see the gold streets and I see the amazing rivers of peace. I'm going to be excited because once and for all, I get to be with God himself, the one that I believed in, the one that I've trusted trusted the one I've walked with in difficult seasons come on y'all heaven is the byproduct that's just the place but the destination I would even go as far as to say it's not just heaven oh come on it's Jesus come on somebody come on someone it's Jesus it's Jesus and here's the beautiful part about Jesus being the way when I embrace him when I embrace him wherever I'm at a little bit of heaven comes to me come on y'all I don't feel heaven completely but watch this when I embrace the presence of Jesus Christ I feel a little bit of heaven come on and the more I look over my life and I know I'm young but the more I look over the, my life and I've been through hell let me tell you something I've been through hell I know what it's like to hurt and to suffer but the more I look over my life it wasn't just the, the destination of a place. It wasn't just the address of heaven that got me through. You know what got me through every single time and is getting me through? Is embracing the person of Jesus where I, wherever I'm at. So I want to urge you this morning, if you don't get anything out of today's message, I want to urge you to embrace the way himself, the person of Jesus. Embrace him. I, I was... On vacation, well, I'll tell you two stories. I remember when I first started the calling, I remember God spoke to me powerfully and shared with me, Michael, I have a mission for you and a message within you. And I want you to preach to your generation. And I thought, God, choose someone else. Please don't choose me, <laughs> to be honest with you. But in faith, I move forward. And I thought, God, how am I going to get through this? How do I plan a church? How do I do this? And I remember there's, there's all kinds of methodologies and books and strategies. There's all of that out there. But I remember the Lord tell me that, telling me this, Michael, I am the way. I'm the way. Embrace me and you'll find the right way. I, not too long ago, I was on vacation and I was on this beautiful green hill and park. And I remember just overlooking the beautiful Pacific Ocean. I mean, turquoise water, just aqua. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I remember I was just meditating on, with the Lord. Asking him as a leader, as a husband, as a father, God, give me, give me, give me direction during this time. And he, he has, but give me direction during this time. God, show me what to do and what not to do. Help me lead this church in a healthy manner. Help me lead this flock through this tumultuous year. And you know what Jesus said? He said this to me, and partly why this message came about. He said, Michael, I am the way. I am the destination. I'm not just the direction. I am the destination. You remember early on that Christians were not just called Christians. Christians, Christians in the early church were not called Christians. All right, They were actually called followers of the way. Sometimes it, some scholars say it was because of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3 which talks about John 
or, uh, John preparing the way of the Lord. Prepare a way, all right? Make the roads clear. Make, make level the ground, all right, if you will. Um, other scholars say that it's just the followers were taught a new way of living and a new way of being. I'm here to tell you this morning, whatever you're going through this morning, all right, to embrace the person of Jesus, no matter where you're at, if you're sick, if you're struggling, if you're doing well, all right, if you're trying to make it through work through this COVID crisis, if you're trying to make ends meet and make it through financially, embrace the way, embrace Jesus. Let me tell you right now, there is no other way in this world that will get you into heaven. There is no other teaching. There's no other teacher. There is no other prophet. There is no other manuscript, if you will. It is the person of Jesus Christ. And like I said, that is not politically correct, but let me tell you, it is biblically correct. Jesus does an only claim to, tell, to be the way, but watch this. He says, I am the truth. And you cannot know the way if you don't know the truth, all right? And let me tell you something. We live in a world today that society is constantly changing truth. Truth is relative to what they think and to what I think. And truth is sometimes dogged down into just my experience, my truth, and your truth. As if that was some kind of like some significant, huge you know, holy thing, all right, if you will. And that's not to downplay your experience. But it's important to know that your truth, boo-boo, is a lowercase t, all right? It's not a capital T because Jesus says he is the truth, all right? And let me tell you, truth has always been under attack since the very beginning of time itself. The devil hates truth. When he speaks, he speaks lies. He is the father of lies, perhaps the creator of lies itself all right so if you're looking for truth this morning don't look to social media don't look to fox news cnn msnbc all your horoscope all your crystals all right look to the person of jesus christ let me tell you truth is not just an abstract concept truth uh, uh, is not a creation let me tell you truth is uncreated truth is a person truth got some hands truth got some feet truth got some eyes the truth is a person his name is Jesus Jesus doesn't just interpret truth as a man Jesus doesn't just echo truth like a prophet no he is the embodiment of truth y'all he is the word made flesh when he was born the truth Enter the world, you remember the gospel of John chapter one, I believe. He says, we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only who came to us full of grace and truth. Here's the thing about truth. You got to live in truth. You got to experience truth. All right. Are you living in in truth? Because in order to go the way with Jesus, in order to embrace him and live his way, means that we have to also embrace the truth. And here's the fact, here's the simple fact of the matter. The truth is we are all sinners falling short of the glory of God, every single person. And the truth is we are sinners and without him, there is no way to God, all right? He has died and in three days raised from the grave, ascended to the right hand of God, the Father, which is a seat of power and authority. And as we follow him, we live in the truth that, yeah, we may stumble, we may fall, but we got the person of Jesus Christ and we can get back up and we can keep moving forward in our faith and in our life. Come on, someone, you out there, you listening. So here's the reality. You cannot embrace the way if we do not realize the truth. In John chapter 1, Jesus, John describes Jesus as this, that he in him was life. And this life was the light of all men. Jesus also claims that he's not just the truth. But watch this, that he is the, he is the life. He is Life itself. In some other scriptures, theologically speaking, Paul, I believe the apostle Paul would actually say, in him we move and live and have our being. He is the one who holds it all together, boo-boo, because in him 
is life. He radiates with life. The truth of the fact is you can be alive, but you can be the walking dead. You can be biologically alive, but very spiritually dead. And John, he talks about this Zoe life, spiritual life, that it can only be renewed by the birthing of the Holy Spirit within you. All right. He says, in him is life. Do you have this life this morning? Are you struggling with life? This morning, Jesus wants to turn on the lights for you. You know, the the significance about life here to me, and it's not so much in my notes, but I feel like the Lord is sharing with me. In John chapter 14, the latter half, Jesus starts talking about another person that is so significant to the empowerment of of life, the life that he gives which is spiritual life. Remember, he says also, I am the resurrection and the life. But there's another person, and that is the work and the person and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but I realize that the, that the thing that, if you will, the person that drives my spiritual life is my relationship with the Holy Spirit. See, he's not just a a floating ghost or he's not just a concept. The Holy Spirit is a person moving and breathing. I'll never forget I was on my vacation and I remember as I was studying in our balcony overlooking the water, there was this one palm tree. And for some reason, out of many palm trees, there was just this one palm tree. And, and, and it was just moving back and forth, bending, windy, or bending here and there. No other uh, palm tree was, other, was moving. And I felt like the Lord, the Holy Spirit shared with me. This is how I work. You know, I'm invisible, but you can see the effects. Oh, come on, boo-boo. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, it is the Holy Spirit who gives you the power to forgive. It is the Holy Spirit who gives you the empowerment to live in the grace and the truth of Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who empowers you for miracles, who empowers you for works of service. It is the Holy Spirit who makes you want to love the person of Jesus Christ and thank the Father for sending the Son. Oh, come on. We have to live with that dynamic and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us the gifts as a church church to operate and perform miracles for uh, uh, his for him and for the world to convert believers let me tell you the day that you accepted the person of Jesus Christ was not upon your own uh, reaction or your own ability it was because one day the Holy Spirit was knocking on your heart and said I love to come live inside your life and in fact I want to make your life brand new I want to open up your eyes to show you how I've been with you, how I've walked with you. I want to open up your eyes to embrace Jesus right now with you. And how do you receive the Spirit? You might say, honestly, sometimes I'm a, I'm a, I'm a born-again Pentecostal. I was raised in a Pentecostal church. I got my degree from a four-square denomination. Brother is, okay, I am, that is my background. Or I believe in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, the whole bit. All right. But you know what? Honestly, you got to just receive. The Holy Spirit is a gift and he comes by receiving. He will not break down the doors of your life. He will not, he will not budge and nudge his way in. Jesus Christ is a gentleman and he wants to send you his spirit so you can interact with him daily. The way we interact with Jesus these days, and that's what they don't understand They have all these questions for Jesus, the disciples. Well, where are you going? How do we get there? You know, you are one with the God. But watch this. When it came to Pentecost and and the coming of the Holy Spirit, man, they were empowered to speak with boldness. They were empowered to move mightily in miracles. They would touch uh, people and they would receive recovery of sight. They would speak a new heavenly language, languages evangelizing to those around them. Come on, y'all. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't do nothing, all right? So that's what they don't understand. Right now, they only understand in part. And right now, maybe you only understand Jesus. Oh, man, in part. I feel like God wants me to tell someone watching this this morning. Maybe you don't understand a fuller view of Jesus. It's because you haven't received a person of the Holy Spirit yet. And let me tell you, you won't ever reach a day where you completely understand him. No, Jesus will keep you on your toes as you continue to journey with him. 
But maybe your homework assignment this evening or this day or this afternoon is to go in your bedroom and just say, and just, I'm actually going to kneel. Let's <laughs> do this. Maybe you just need to go to your bedroom and just do this, Holy Spirit, I receive you. I will never forget the day I received the Holy Spirit. It's when I just went to my room because my pastor said, he, told, he, he asked me to do this. Do this on your own. And as I went to my room, I remember, I just said, God, I want more of you. I believe in you. I want to walk with you. I want to see the things you're doing in my life. I don't want to be blind and dull to the your workings of, of what you're doing. And I remember as I just started praising God, saying thank you, I just, a heavenly language just started to come over me. I remember just praising God and this heavenly language started to come over me. And in some ways I can interpret it. But I want to let you know the significance and the empowerment of the Spirit that you cannot live this life without Him. All right, and maybe for you it's not speaking in a heavenly language, but maybe for you it's administration. Maybe for you it's, it's gifts of service or gifts of healing. Maybe it's something different. But together when we work with the Holy Spirit, we can do mighty things. And I'm speaking to someone today, maybe you just need to yield. Maybe right now you're struggling in your marriage and you're wondering how God, how I cannot humanly possible. I cannot humanly, uh, possibly speaking, do this on my own. I can't, I can't fix this marriage. Watch this. You need more help than your human effort. Maybe it's the, the person of the Holy Spirit who can help you. Maybe you're going to work and you just feel like you've had it up to here with the people. And you just, you just can't deal with them anymore, humanly speaking. But let me tell you, God will send a new spirit to help you. And that's what he does. He's a helper and he's an advocate. All right, and he has empowered you to do, to do the works of service for Jesus Christ and to glorify his name. I went off a little bit because I believe that God is speaking to someone today. All right, so in closing, I want to say this. Jesus is the way to God precisely because he is the truth of God and he is the life of God. God is not merely a direction uh, God is part, Jesus is not just a direction. He's not merely pointing the direction. Jesus is part of the destination. Heaven is the byproduct and, and it's all about Jesus. The address is Jesus to where, to where it is to, make, to break through whatever you're going through. As I close, one of the most amazing medieval Christian authors writes this and speaking about John chapter 14. He says, I am the way to God. He's metaphorically or, or speaking. He's saying, I am the way to God, Jesus speaking. I did not come to light a path, to blaze a trail that you may simply follow in my tracks. Pursue my shadow like a prize that's cheaply won. My life reveals the life of God, the sum of all he is and all he does. So how can you, the sons of night, look on me and construe my way as just the road for you to run? My path takes in Gethsemane, the cross, and the stark rejection draped in agony. My way to God embraces utmost loss. Your way to God is not my way. Watch this. Your way to God is not my way. This is Jesus, if you will. Your way to God is not my way. Your way is me, but me. Each other path is a dismal swamp or fraud. I stand alone. I am the way to God. Jesus is not just a direction. He's part of the destination. He is the savior of the world. As we close this morning, I want to ask you a simple question, a powerful question. Who is Jesus to you? You remember he asked the disciples around him and he says, some say you're Elijah, some say you're John, reincarnated, I believe. And then, Jesus, uh, then Peter stood up among them and said, you are, you are Jesus Christ. You are the son of the living God. The reality is, we need, uh, who, who is Jesus to you? Because if Jesus is just a teacher, he's not enough. Or, or he, isn't enough. He, he is who he is, but that's not the correct tr the truth. If he's just a prophet, it's not enough. All right? If he's just another amazing world leader, that's not enough. All right. 
He claims things no one else claims. And that, and that is a significant thing. So who is Jesus to you? That's a s- simple and important question. Let me tell you, do you know him as, per- as, as, a personal, as your personal Lord and Savior? Let me tell you, some of you right now, you're looking for a route to heaven. Some of you are looking for an alternate route to healing. Some of you are looking for a way to make things make sense. Let me tell you, Jesus says, I am the way. Why not come to Jesus? He is the only way to the Father. All right. You say, Pastor Michael, I know I need my life right with God. And right now where you're sitting or wherever you're watching from, you might feel a nudge or a simple knock on the, on, on the beat of your heart, on the door of your heart. Let me tell you, that is the person of the Holy Spirit. He wants, to, he wants you to live in truth, to walk in his way, and to receive this dynamic life, this life in Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, to live an abundant life. Even if it's just one person that receives Jesus, I fulfilled my mission this morning. So you say, Pastor, that's me. I need to get my life right. My life is a mess. My kids are a mess. I feel like I'm not a good parent. I'm not a good worker. I I want God to put me on my path. I don't know the direction. I'm directionless. And I know that I need Jesus because he is my destination. I would say that is a wonderful thing. I would love to pray with you this very moment. Would you bow your heads and repeat this prayer after me? I can tell you right now, your life will never be the same. Let's go ahead and pray. Say, dear God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. Jesus, come into my life. Make me new. Holy Spirit, pour into me the dynamic force of spiritual life. Give me new birth. Give me new direction. Speak to me. Put me on the path of righteousness for your name's sake. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. Church, I just want to congratulate you if you said that prayer for the first time. Or you maybe you made a recommitment to follow him again. I want to say that is this will be the best day of your life they say there's two significant days of your life right which which is one is the day you were born number two is the day you find out why today you found out why you were born it's to live a life of purpose in the person of jesus christ church i love you um, i'm so excited to see you soon we will see each other soon i promise you stay encouraged remain strong in the faith pursue jesus with all your heart Remember, he's not just the direction, he is the destination. Embrace him wherever you're at today. God bless you. Thank you.